Okay, the last ingredient I need is some ground cinnamon. Cinnamon. You know what it tastes like, you know what it smells like, but do you know where it comes from? Yeah, yeah. Okay, a lot of cinnamon does come from the bark of a tree, but as you can imagine, harvesting tree bark can be expensive and time-consuming. Growing cinnamon trees also uses up a lot of land and water resources. And besides, why harvest tree bark when it turns out most of the cinnamon taste comes from a single compound? Cinnamol alcohol is a relatively small molecule that most people associate with cinnamon flavor and fragrance. However, it's also used in medicine. Cinnamol alcohol is the starting material for producing pharmaceuticals such as flunorazine, an antifungal treatment, taxol, an anti-cancer drug, and cinnamol glycosides, a group of immune enhancers. So there's a huge motivation to make this compound. Currently, two major methods of producing cinnamol alcohol for flavoring, fragrance, and pharmaceuticals dominate the industry. Extraction from cinnamon tree leaves and chemical production. However, cinnamon tree leaves happen to contain a liver toxic compound called coumarin, and chemical production results in toxic aluminum salt waste. Clearly, neither of these methods are that ideal. In this series, I will attempt to produce cinnamon with genetically modified yeast with my lab group. We will walk through how to design DNA for a new organism, build DNA CDs called plasmids, and use these plasmids to sort of program yeast with new genes. Finally, we'll explore methods like HPLC to quantify the compounds we're making. I think that there are many misconceptions of the synthetic biology and genetic engineering fields, so I hope that this series can shed some light on what goes on under the hood. Welcome to DIY Biotech. First, let's talk about yeast. Yeast cells are like tiny factories that can produce high value compounds from low value compounds. For thousands of years, various forms of sugar have been converted to ethanol by these adorable little microorganisms. Today, genetic engineering allows us to transfer genes from other organisms and integrate them into yeast to create new products. Over the past few decades, innovations in DNA synthesis, DNA sequencing, and genetic engineering tools like the CRISPR system have made genetic engineering and synthetic biology far more feasible for academia and industry alike. By using yeast to produce cinnamon alcohol instead of the current industry standard, we can produce a pure product and less toxic waste. Saccharomyces yeast, the yeast we bake bread and brew beer with, may be the king in the yeast world, but there are several other species of recent interest. In my PhD research, I work with Euroia lipolitica, which we've affectionately nicknamed Yali. This organism has some advantages that may help us produce much more cinnamon alcohol compared to using Saccharomyces yeast. Yali can grow in extreme environments, consume nasty, low-cost substrates, and produce excessive amounts of fats. Cinnamon alcohol is a relatively low-value chemical, so using a low-cost substrate will be helpful here. Though cinnamon alcohol is likely to be toxic to Yali, studies show that this oleaginous yeast can seclude toxic compounds in little lipid droplets inside of itself. Since researchers have already produced cinnamon alcohol in Saccharomyces yeast, we can just adjust the genes from Saccharomyces yeast slightly and integrate them into our novel yeast. So, Let's take a deeper dive into the mechanics of this project. Through four enzymatic steps, we can pretty easily produce cinnamon alcohol from the amino acid phenylalanine. This aromatic amino acid is converted from transcinnamic acid to cinnamaldehyde and finally to cinnamon alcohol. Each of these compounds have their own industrial and pharmaceutical importance and also as precursors to other chemicals. Despite having cinnamon-flavored names, they are also produced in other life on Earth. As far as gene integration goes, we'll be integrating three genes. However, none of the genes we integrate into Yali will be from the cinnamon tree. The first gene, ATPAL2, is from a tiny flowering plant called Arabidopsis thaliana. ACAR is from a bacterium in the Nocardia genus. ENTD is from E. coli, a common organism used in labs. 
And the final enzymatic step is catalyzed by alcohol dehydrogenase, which is a very ubiquitous enzyme found in most organisms. In summary, there are four enzymatic steps, but we only need to integrate three genes. So it sort of sounds like science fiction, but we can find the sequences of these three genes for free online, adapt the sequences for our organism, and then order the genes to be printed for us. Once we have the genes printed, we can put them in plasmids that carry the genes for us into YALI. The plasmids are carefully designed circular pieces of DNA that can then integrate these genes into the yeast genome using the CRISPR-Cas9 system. With some luck, we'll be able to produce cinnamal alcohol for the first time ever in Euroea lipolytica. Now, realistically, we need to do some adjustments to the expression levels of the genes, or we may need to feed phenylalanine to the yeast. Phenylalanine is the precursor to cinnamal alcohol in this metabolic pathway. If we're able to produce cinnamal alcohol, we can't just send off samples of our yeast to a lab to have the cinnamal alcohol measured. After all, I mean, we are the lab. To do this, I will be developing a method to understand how much of the compounds in the cinnamal alcohol pathway we're producing. We'll need to design a chemical extraction method to get these compounds out of the yeast. Then we can use a very common method called high pressure liquid chromatography, or HPLC, to precisely separate and identify these compounds. This project will be touching on fields like synthetic biology, analytical chemistry, and bioinformatics. My intention is not necessarily to teach you every detail of the process, but more to show you what this field is all about. There's a lot of fear surrounding synthetic biology, but personally, I see a lot of promise. Through building knowledge and taking on misinformation around synthetic biology, perhaps we can make better decisions for the future. Hey, I come from a future where there is significantly less facial hair to tell you that despite some fear surrounding genetic engineering, it can do a lot of good in the world. For example, vitamin A deficiency is a terrible condition where first you go permanently blind and then you die. Hundreds of thousands of people are affected by this, particularly in Southeast Asia, where rice is the main source of calories. And so scientists created the Golden Rice Project to produce vitamin A in rice, genetically engineered rice that can produce vitamin A. And so if this could be distributed to Southeast Asia, then potentially we could end this vitamin A deficiency, saving hundreds of thousands of lives. With this project, there are so many problems we could run into, unfortunately. You know, maybe these compounds are toxic to Yali. Maybe the enzymes are super unproductive. Maybe we won't be able to identify compounds with HPLC. Maybe everything will work just fine, but we'll only produce very small amounts of cinnamon alcohol. Who knows? I guess, you know, we'll just have to try and find out. If we are successful, we can further optimize the pathway or even play with scaling up to bioreactors. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll like this video where I discuss the pathway to produce CBD in yeast. Be sure to leave a like and comment down below what compound you would want to produce in yeast. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'll show you how I designed the DNA to be inserted into YALI. And make sure to subscribe if you want to follow along. Thanks for watching.